Let's now step back and look at the heart from a different perspective, and let's include understanding the presence and the function of valves. This particular drawing indicates uh, with initials the various chambers of the heart. So right atrium, right ventricle, left atrium, and left ventricle. The valves that are in these areas, we have the atrioventricular valves, which are between the right atrium and right ventricle, and the left atrium and left ventricle. And then we have our semilunar valves, which on the right side of the heart would be our pulmonary valve, and on the left side of the heart, our aortic valve. Now, as we look at valves and how they function in the heart, it's important to understand that valves will open or close primarily based on pressure differentials. So if we have a valve and we have a pressure that's built up behind the valve, that pressure will cause that valve to swing open. So when our ventricle contracts, it's going to provide pressure that's going to, in this case, open up the pulmonary or the aortic valve and allow blood to pass on through. Now, initially, that blood flows fl through simply because of the pressure differences, but realize that because of the force that's created, there's quite a bit of inertia that develops with that flow of blood, so the blood will actually stay open a little bit longer than we could explain simply from a pressure differential alone. So our valve opens because of pressure in this direction, but realize when the pressure changes, that pressure then is going to cause that valve to close. Now, if you look back at our first picture, we show that on the atrioventricular valves, there appear to be some tendinous type attachments that attach to the leaflets of the valves. These are called corda tendini. Now, if, by just looking at the picture, you might assume that the muscles that those tendinous attachments attach to would contract and cause those valves to open, but that's not the case. Again, the valves open and close because of pressure differences. These corda tendini they function so that when the ventricle does contract, and there's quite a bit of pressure building up in the ventricular chambers, it keeps these atrial ventricular valves from everting and allowing the blood to flow backwards. So the purpose of the valves is really to make sure that we have one-way flow of blood throughout the heart. Now with this information in mind, we can now begin to talk about what's called the cardiac cycle. So the cardiac cycle refers to the events that occur during the contraction and relaxation of the heart. And we can divide the cardiac cycle into four different phases. In this particular picture, we are demonstrating the left side of the heart. So this would be the left atria, the left ventricle. This would be the aortic valve. This would be our atrial ventricular valve or the mitral valve on the left side of the heart. So realize that when we talk about the cardiac cycle, what's happening on one side of the heart is also happening on the other as well. So for simplicity's sake, we'll simply refer to the left side of the heart at this point. So the first phase of the cardiac cycle we refer to as ventricular filling. And what you'll notice is that each of these names of the cycle are going to correspond with exactly what's happening during that time. So during ventricular filling, the pressure in the atria is greater than the pressure in the ventricle. Because of that, the atrial ventricular valve will be open and blood will be flowing through the atria into the ventricle, hence ventricular filling. Now initially that flow of blood is quite rapid. We call that the rapid filling phase. And then as more and more blood fills up the ventricle and the pressure begins to rise a bit, that filling phase then slows down. We call that diastasis. Now, toward the end of ventricular filling, if you think back to our electrical activity of the heart, remember we had the P wave, which causes atrial contraction. So toward the end of ventricular filling, the atria will contract, and that will push just a little bit more blood into the ventricle. The picture on the bottom here depicts ventricular volume, and so this lighter colored purple indicates the phase of rapid ventricular filling, followed by diastasis, followed by this small bump in volume caused by atrial contraction. So that's the first phase of the cardiac cycle. Now what happens next is the ventricle is then 
depolarized and it's going to contract. And once it begins to contract, the pressure in the ventricle then increases. And when it does, the pressure in the ventricle becomes greater than the pressure in the atria and the atrioventricular valve closes. And that accounts for the first heart sound when we're listening with a stethoscope. So during this phase, the ventricle continues to contract and pressure begins to build within the ventricle. So the pressure in the ventricle remains greater than the pressure in the atria, but you'll notice that this is isovolumetric ventricular contraction, so that means the volume in the ventricle stays the same. So from that name, we can then deduce that all valves are closed. So if the aortic valve is also closed, that would tell us that the pressure in the aorta is greater than the pressure in the ventricle, thereby causing that valve to remain closed. Now as we continue to contract the ventricle, the ventricular pressure continues to increase, and eventually that pressure will become greater than the pressure in the aorta. When that becomes greater than the pressure in the aorta, that aortic valve will then open, and blood will then begin to be ejected. That then marks the period, the beginning of ventricular ejection. So in ventricular ejection, the pressure has become greater in the ventricle than the aorta, so blood is leaving. Notice that the atrioventricular valve remains closed, so the pressure in the ventricle is greater than the pressure in the atria, and blood is now being rapidly ejected from the ventricle. We can see that depicted on this graph. This is showing the volume of blood in the ventricle decreasing quite rapidly. Now initially that flow is rapid because the pressure in the ventricle is so much greater than the aorta, but realize toward the end it starts to kind of slow down. The valve remains open though because of the inertia of the blood pushing forward keeps that valve open and blood continues to leave slowly. Now eventually the pressure in the ventricle becomes less than the pressure in the aorta once again, and when that happens, that's going to cause that aortic valve to close. When the aortic valve closes, that accounts for our second heart sound. So this is the period of isovolumetric ventricular relaxation. So again, the name tells a lot. Isovolumetric means there's no change in volume, which means all valves have to be closed. So if all valves are closed, we can look at this and say the pressure in the aorta must be greater than the pressure in the ventricle, and the pressure in the ventricle must be greater than the pressure in the atria. That's what accounts for these valves remaining closed. So as the ventricle continues to relax, what's going to happen is the pressure in the ventricle continues to decrease. And eventually that pressure in the ventricle will decrease to the point that it's below the atrial pressure, and then that brings us back to the phase of ventricular filling. Now two other terms that we're going to introduce here are going to be two terms that can divide the cardiac cycle into two main categories. The first term we call systole. Systole is when the ventricular muscle is contracting. So the ventricular muscle will be contracting during the phase of isovolumetric ventricular contraction as well as during ventricular ejection. The other term is called diastole, and diastole encompasses that period when the ventricle is relaxing. So this will include isovolumetric ventricular relaxation and ventricular filling. Now notice that we'll use these terms specifically in relation to the ventricle. But rather than say ventricular systole or ventricular diastole, it's given that when we use those terms alone, we're referring to the ventricle. Occasionally, someone may want to be talking specifically about the function of the atria, and if that's the case, they can sure describe the contraction of the atria as atrial systole, but typically, we're primarily focusing on the function of the ventricle, so these terms will be used with that in mind.